Hello, this is part one of discussion on the most important term in Buddhism. Whatever branch it may be, it is the most important term. That term is anatta, or Sanskrit anatman. Why is this term so important? All of modern Buddhism falls flatly on its ass from the definition of this one word. Not its connotation, not its denotation, not what its people have opinions or conjectures about it, but its actual doctrinal definition. The Theravadan materialist and famous Theravadan Jnana Taloka has said specifically, quote, Thus, with this doctrine of selflessness, or anatta, stands or falls the entire structure of Buddhism, unquote. And he is correct in that. He is the famous English Western world entrepreneur who has since deceased for Buddhism, as well as all the Theravadans in Sri Lanka, Laos, Burma, etc. today. What does this term mean and why is it so important? The notion that there is no soul in Buddhism does not exist scripturally or doctrinally. If, as Buddhism doctrine indicates, the utter inconsubstantiality of the five aggregates are, in perpetuity, anisha, dukkha, mara, anatta, as pointed out in Samyutta Nikaya 3.193.196, then the very foundation of emancipation, vimutta, of immortality, amata, and of illumination, i.e. buddhi, or vidya, as lauded in scripture, are groundless, and Buddhism itself is inherently a self-contradictory and senseless dogma. If one's own nature is that of the khandas, i.e. the five aggregates, there is no hope of emancipation, of vimutta, for one cannot avoid or escape one's own nature intrinsically. However, if one's own nature is other than the khandas, liberation is only possible. But one own one immediately concedes to that which affects itself as subject from its own beginningless ignorance, or avidya. However, avidya doesn't specifically mean, metaphysically in definition, ignorance. Rather, it is the attribute of the Absolute. However, that's a discussion for another video. In objectifying itself as conduct, one denies the foundation for secular Theravada dogma, the no-soul doctrine and much of modern Mahayana, which also supports this position that there is ultimately no self or no soul. And the entire anti-foundational modern Buddhism, which utterly guffaws and laughs at the mention of an incorporeal ontological existence as the basis for freedom, as pertains to Buddhism. The immortality spoken of in the doctrine of Buddhism, the earliest scriptures, leaving out completely opinions, conjectures, what I heard, what I feel, what I believe, any commentary, be it old or new, is spoken of, i.e., the Atman, or the Atan in Pali, as the immortal, Amata, the unborn, the Ajata, the supreme self, the Mahata, the uncaused, Samskrita, the undying, Amara, and the eternal, Nietzsche, as opposed to the famous term which everybody knows, Anicca, impermanent, not permanent. All the Khandas are Anicca, Mara, Dukha, and Anatta. Impermanent are Mara, are suffering. That, obviously, is a given. The great self is spoken of, in contrast with the corporeal self, or the kandic self, the namarupic, the psychophysical self, or the little self in Pali, alpamata, or the fair self, i.e. the beautiful self, kalyanata. And this is opposed and juxtaposed with that of the foul self, or the corporeal self in doctrine, or papata. In scripture, the soul is, quote-unquote, the dearest beloved, Atahi Paramopiya. Obviously there is an ontological self, and I don't mean the corporeal self is looked upon in the mirror, the self of flesh and blood and urine and feces, which is born and obviously subjugated to dying. There is no more a self or a soul in this corporeal body than there is light in what is illuminated, nor is there a radio signal inside the radio, nor are there quote-unquote little people inside the television set. We all take this for granted, and even a five-year-old knows it, who has basic science learning at a preschool level. And yet we laugh at people who talk about the self or the soul inside a coordinate persona non grata, Bob, Sue, Larry. Obviously there is no self, no ultimate self, no soul inside the corporeal self. Like I said, there is no light in what is illuminated. Buddhism doesn't say this, nor any branch of metaphysics, be it Platonism, Gnosticism, of the more intelligent varieties, however. Much of Gnosticism, of course, is somewhat heretical. But there's no branch of original metaphysics that speaks of the soul as being found coordinate inside the psychophysical. It is coordinate to it, coincident 
but it is not found within that self. Modern Buddhism affirms only six things and ultimately seven things. The five khandhas and avijja, avijja being ignorance. That's its denotation, however, it specifically means something else exactly. It actually affirms the seventh thing, nirvana, but it does not admit to a subject which obtains it. Buddhism, of course, teaches that there is a transcendent subject beyond the psychophysical self. Dhammapada 147, Behold that painted puppet, riddled with oozing sores, an erected facade, diseased heap that fools fancy and swoon over. This body ultimately befalls destruction. Verse 148, This body is soon cast out, the very same abode for diseased sickness that is broken apart. This body is soon cast away, the very putrid heap. It is always in death that life meets its end. Behold that city of bones, verse 150, plastered together with flesh and blood. Within its walls are old age, death, pride, arrogance, and hypocrisy, as its townsfolk. Even the noble's king, noble king's well-adorned chariot decays, so too that undergoes the same fate. The whole point is that we're not speaking about the psychophysical self, the self looked upon in the mirror, the self meaning the persona non grata, Bob, Sue, Larry, etc., etc. In further video discussions upon this one term, which it is almost laughable, and it is laughable to me, that I actually have to go into such elaboration, rises or falls the entire structure of modern Buddhism. All of Buddhism finds its identity in whether or not the term anatta is a denial of the Atman. And of course it is not. There are 22 things within doctrine which are called anatta. It is an adjective, thanks to a Pali search engine, of which I am a Pali translator of the ancient Prakrit Pali, I am able to find that all 662 occurrences, unquestionably and logically so, as it happens, are an adjective. These 22 things are called anatta. To say that ABC and XYZ are anatta, are not the self, are not the soul, is no different than saying there are no elephants in the United States or in Alaska, therefore there are no elephants. That is a fallacy of composition. There are, of course, elephants, but they are not found here, they are not found there. And it's, of course, illogical that the most common phrase found in the Pali is isokaya namisoata. This body is not my soul, is not myself. That is a fact. That is the most common occurrence in the Pali. It repeats itself over and over again thousands of times. Also, kaya nata, rupa nata, veda nata, sana nata, the five aggregates are not the soul. If Buddhism were at all logical and it denied the self or the soul, Gautama himself would have said outright, bekave anatati, or bekave natata. Disciples, there is no self, there is no soul. There would be no need to eliminate the 22 things which are not the self, not the soul, over and over again. It would be very simplex and very logical if Gautama was not a moron, to simply say, followers, disciples, there is no self, there is no soul, period, end of story. No such passage exists. It doesn't exist in any translation. It cannot be found in the Nikayas. This is only part one of a multi-part discussion upon the Taramanatha. You have to understand why this term is so important, because upon this one word rises and falls the entire connotation and denotation of Buddhism as being a soul-denying form of moralistic humanism. Sad to say, most Westerners who are Buddhists are Christian rejects. They either grew up hating Christianity or they're rejects from Judaism or Christianity, or they are, by their very nature, either atheistic or agnostic. And they love the notion that modern Buddhism's connotation is one of secular humanism. Be good to your neighbor, lead a straight moral life. Nothing can be further from the truth. Buddhism does not teach this in scripture. Buddhism is a liberation ontology based upon wisdom. The entire Alpha and Omega of Buddhism is Panna Vimutta, liberation via wisdom. This cannot be disputed. That is the entire principle of Buddhism. As famously said by Gautama before his death in Samyutta Nikaya 5.8, he referred to his as Amata Gamimaga, the Aryan path to immortality. Amata does not mean deathless. It is literally amato, or immortalis, the path to immortality. Deathless, of course, is a connotation of zombieism. Modern Buddhism believes that there is purification within Maradama. Of course, the five khandas are in Samyutta Nikaya 3.195, Maradama. What are the five khandas? They are Maradama, according to Gautama. If one believes 
both that the five khandas are maradama and the locus of liberation and purity, then Buddhism is the most illogical and insane pseudo-intelligent form of metaphysics ever put on the face of this earth. At one sense you have both the locus of all evil and impurity and all change, i.e. maradami, samyurinike 3.185, and you have it as the locus of nirvana and liberation as well. That is what modern Buddhism teaches. However, that is not what Buddhism teaches in doctrine. It teaches that the citta transcends nisarana, the Pali word for transcends, the five khandas. There is a subject, the citta of course being in the Greek nous, or the spiritus sancta, i.e. the atman, although that's a topic for another video. There is a subject which transcends the five khandas, which is the locus of purity. Buddhahood and Tathagatahood in the Dignike and the Majjhima Nikaya is equated to the Suvi Mutta Chitata, the fully or the absolutely liberated Chitta, i.e. the spirit, which is not differentiated from the Atman, which by the way, of course, in no way differs from that of the Advaita Vedanta, which teaches that the Chitta is also the Atman. The Upanishads teach this as well. The Chitta and the Atman are the self or the soul. And logically so, all branches of metaphysics teach this as well, including early Platonism. The Nus or the mind, or the spiritus sancta, is also the self or the soul intrinsically, inherently. It is the subject in the dearest sense. This is part one in a series. Might I remind you that the most famous soul-denying Theravadan, A.P. Buddhadatta, read a book by George Grimm, written back in the 40s. It's called The Doctrine of the Buddha, and he wrote to his daughter, I read that book, The Doctrine of the Buddha, and found it to be, as you stated in your letter, to be that he, Grimm, George Grimm, has recovered the old genuine Doctrine of the Buddha, which has been submerged. When we, Theravadans, read our Pali texts, meaning Abhidhamma commentaries, Burgosa and the Vishuddhamaga, we get the idea of Buddhism as a sort of nihilism. Thus I was puzzled for a very long time to understand the true meaning of Buddhism. Though I had been born a Buddhist, many people do not go so far in these matters of doctrine. This is the summation of modern Buddhism. People read commentary. They listen to what their teachers say. To actually have the time, like I myself have been given, to have well over a decade of research and the great capacity to understand ancient languages. I was always called a prodigy in learning languages. Of the few traits that I have that are good, that is certainly one of them. People that actually have endless years to look into and translate these ancient texts, un endless hours, are basically non-existent. People like George Grimm, Dr. Eku Kumaraswamy, uh, C. F. Reese Davis, co-founder of the Polytech Society, myself, and a handful of others throughout the past, are very, very few. Everything people read about Buddhism comes second-hand to the people that control these scriptures. I don't mean control them in that they own them, but they interpret us for them. Because who has the time to spend 15 years, who has the smarts also, to be able to research these ancient medieval texts which are so extremely hard to translate? Knowing six languages, I tell you, ancient Pali is extremely hard to translate. Nobody has the time for that. And even if they had the time for it, they probably don't have the brains for it. So. This is where modern Buddhism falls. This is the end of a part one series on the discussion of Anatta. Once again, let's seek the truth. The facts, ma'am, and only the facts, as the movie line goes. Let's look at the facts and not the commentary. Atahi Paramopiya. This was the commandment of Gautama the Buddha. The self or the soul is the dearest beloved. And we don't mean the reflexive self, the psychophysical self, the namarupic self meaning Bob, Sue, Larry, etc. That corporeal self is fated to the grave. There is no soul, no self inside this corporeal body. That does not mean there is no self, there is no soul. A, B, C, and X, Y, Z are anatta. This is not a negation of the atta, or the atman in Sanskrit. Thank you. We'll go into much further detail on part two and three and further series on this topic.